Hello you and welcome to some kind of fucks content and welcome to a game called Hire Me, the ruth ruthless job interview simulator. Job interviews, huh? I think that's a situation that most of us here, if not all of us, have uh, at some point found ourselves in. Or if not, then at least at some point during your life, you are most likely to find yourself in the uh, situation of a job interview. It's just a, a part of life for many of folks, uh, myself included. I have actually been on both sides of the job interview tables. I have had many a job interviews with companies where I sought to be hired and be a future employee. And I've also been the conductor of a job interview with people who were seeking to be hired by my company. So, uh, so I know a fair bit about job interviews, but that isn't necessarily a catalyst for this game being easy. So without further ado, let's head in and see if I can get a job. Hi there. I'm gonna put the curse on your forehead like a, like a sniper rifle. Pew. Oh, oh, whoops, I, I shot him into action, so to say, oh, hi there. Sorry I didn't see you come in. Welcome to the All Jobs Agency. Oh, okay, so it's like a, a, a job agency, not a specific company that I'm trying to be hired by. Trying to be hired by. I, I hope you don't listen to my talking, because then I'm not going to get hired. Hops of hopes, dreams, and mostly resumes. Oh, God, yeah, resumes. It's good to see you got that job-seeking sparkle in your eyes. Either that, or it's the warm glow, th glow of the translucent overhead lighting. Ha ha ha. Now make yourself comfy. And let's find the job of your dreams. Because you hit the jackpot, job hunter. You're staring at the kingpin of employment wizards, yours truly. It's not bragging if it's true. I've wrangled up job listings that haven't even been invented yet. Yes, here at the All Jobs Acad uh, Academy, All Jobs Agency, all is not just a catchy prefix. We have every kind of job you can think of. In the eight years I work here, I never let a single client stranded at the crossroads of career change. But these tales of triumph can wait. Let's swing the spotlight back to you, superstar. Tell me, what kind of job are you looking for? Please type the job you're looking for. Oh, I get to choose my own! Uh, oh! Uh, you too. No, no, that's too easy. I mean, that would be the obvious answer, but I want to go for something a little more creative here. Don't want to just type YouTube, but that's, that's too easy. It's too obvious. Uh, I want to be a, a... What would I like to do with my time that I have been given here? I would like to be a... a ooh, I want to be a dog petter. If I could just sit around and pet dogs all day, that would be great. Oh, so you want to be a professional dog petter? I guess someone has to do the important jobs of giving those very little creatures their daily dose of love and attention. You see, that's what I want to do. Just make sure you don't get too carried away and end up with a pack of slobbering pups following you everywhere. That would be lovely. That's so cute. Trust me, I speak from experience. So, dog petter. Give me a sec to consult the Oracle, aka our totally not outdated database. No results. Ah, Ha ha ha. That's not funny. I wanted... Oh, you're kidding. Okay. I'm kidding, of course. Lucky for you, it seems we got something that might just be your jam. But the million dollar question is, are you ready to wear the crown? Let's dive in and see. How, you might wonder? I'm gonna hit you with a bunch of questions and you gotta ba bat them back with answers. Then I'll toss out some what ifs and how about, and you'll tell me if you agree or disagree. Just remember, no matter how much you sweat, keep it real, keep it honest. Fake it and we break it. This Q&A dance only works with the truth. Let's do a quick honesty test. Confession time. What is the absolute worst thing you've ever done? Okay, wow. We really came out the door swinging here. 
um, what happened to the where do you see yourself in five year kind of question. Um, uh, what's the worst thing I've done? I've done plenty of horrible things. Uh, uh, the one that springs to mind is that, uh, when, whoops, don't want to misspell on your resume. Uh, when I was nine, I stole my friend's laser, l laser pointer because, B. Okay, I can't type anymore. Okay, when I was nine, I stole my friend's laser pointer because I thought it was cool. And I, my parents wouldn't buy one for me, so <laughs> I feel bad about that. Well, I hope you've learned your lesson and won't be stealing any laser pointers from the precious pups you'll be petting. I don't think I will. Can't have those poor doggies chasing after a red dot that's nowhere to be found. Wait, is this game AI? Because that seems very... I don't think they put a phrase into the game for specifically what I just typed. I think this game is AI. That would just be cruel. Ha 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 ha. Okay, onwards with this evaluation. Because yes, it has already begun. That's true. The job interview um, evaluation begins the moment you step in the door, actually. It's not just your answers, it's your entire demeanor and your way of being. Your little talent show began the second you stump exactly stumbled through that door. Nah, that's not entirely true. I totally spaced out when you made your so-called grand entrance. Let's pin the start time to when I caught the first glimpse of your desperate to impress face. I'm like a human microscope. I'm dissecting your every move and word down to the tiniest of micro expressions. That's why it's important you ponder a little before you spout an answer. No need to treat this like one of your speed dating fiascos. Hey, 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 hey. And remember, there are no stupid or wrong answers. So let's dive a bit into your pragmatic side. What would you delete from the world? Oh dear lord. That was a big, uh, big question. What would I delete from the world? Um, okay, so here's the thing about me. I mean, there are plenty of bad things where you could say like, oh, I want to remove that. But I very much believe in balance. I don't think a world that is a hundred percent good and positive is necessarily a good world. I think you need a bit of darkness to make it to make the light shine bright. So what would I delete from the world? It's not going to be one of the big things. Like I could say stuff like, oh, the hatred of the internet, but I don't want to create like a safe space. I think some negativity on the internet is valid and actually healthy. So I don't want to delete like all hatred of the internet from the world. What would I delete from the world? Oh God, I got it. Um, there are some people right now who are going to hate me for this, but pineapple on pizzas. I think we could get rid of that and not lose too much. Am I right? Well, 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 looks like we have a pineapple hater in our midst. Let me guess, you're also one of those people who think ketchup doesn't belong on hot dogs. No, 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 no. You ain't serving me any hot dogs without ketchup. That's for freaking sure. Ha 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 ha. Forget I said, forget I said there are no, st oh, okay. Forget I said there are no stupid answers. Let's do some hypothetical statements instead. Tell me if you agree or disagree. I have a natural talent for befriending dogs on the job rather than struggling to bond with unfamiliar pups. Well, if it's dogs, I somewhat agree. I think I'm, I'm good at dogs. I constantly daydream about the different ways I could pet a dog rather than just focusing on the current reality of petting one. Yeah, I'm a bit of a dreamer. Uh, this this doesn't go just for like dog petting. This goes for everything. Instead of focusing on what I can control and what I have going on already in reality uh, and focusing on that, 
I'm always, my head is always in the clouds, being like, oh, I could, how do I do this grand thing here? How do I get there? So, somewhat agree. Who is your childhood childhood hero? Who is my childhood hero? Um. Uh. I think the closest thing I would be to a childhood hero is my teacher. I had some really good teachers growing up. Well, I hope your teacher wasn't a dog because petting humans is a whole different job. Ha ha ha. I have some more statements for you. But what happened? I absolutely love having a schedule and keeping track of things, but I also enjoy the freedom to pet dogs whenever I want. I hate schedules. It's the worst thing I know. I, you could put me into the best scenario in the world, but if you do it by schedule, I will hate it. Um, because I will feel immediately like I'm just a robot that is just doing this monotone thing because a schedule dictated. I am so driven by spontaneous emotions. I'm doing whatever I want to do in the moment, so strongly disagree. I hate schedules. I can't even keep a sleep schedule, for Christ's sake. Being brutally honest and not sugarcoating your opinions is crucial in the world of dog petting, even if it means stirring up a few barks and growls along the way. Um, somewhat agree. I think it is... I think we really... Um, I think there are t is too much sugarcoating in the world. I think it is really good for people um, to be like, be honest. Not necessarily brutally honest, but at least be honest. Uh, instead of like sugarcoating or um, hide behind some words or some semantics. Um, uh, just to give you a little story here. Uh, a former colleague of mine, actually no, more like a business partner, uh, was very much in the uh, mindset of, I'm going to give it to you like it is. Like if there's something you do... Uh, it, with like job performance that I don't like for me it's video so if I made something in a video that this person didn't like they would just outright say it they would say like I don't get this part you have done here or I don't like it I don't think it fits instead of this BS where we're like oh yeah it's kind of good maybe hmm, da, blah 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 no give it to me straight I need to know um I struggle with that myself. Um, a lot of the graphic uh, design that I've gotten done for my channel over the years, uh, more more of it has been like not fully what I wanted. But instead of me having the courage and the decency to be like, hey, um, it looks good, but this little part here, can we change that? I'm such a dumb one. I just go like, oh, thank you. And I accept it without being honest. And I don't think that's good. I think it's important that we are honest with each other. Um, but I also feel like you can be too brutally honest. Um, I don't think that's good. And I think also the world has a place for stuff like white lies. So this one somewhat agree. I think we need to be more honest with each other. But not brutally. And we need to keep in mind that we don't. Honesty is not always the best way forward. That sounds weird, but it makes sense in my head. What is your biggest fear? Spiders. No, 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 no. Um, I think my biggest fear is... Hurting others. I am so terrified of that. Everything I do, I'm just like, oh, you're gonna ruin it for this person, or they... They are just saying yes because they have to, but they don't really enjoy you. Or if you are there, then other people are going to leave. I have those stupid fears going on constantly because I'm so afraid of being a detriment to others. Actually, that sounds more fancy and that's good for a resume. Being a detriment to other people. Yeah, I think that's my biggest fear. Oh, don't worry. I'm sure you'll be a much bigger detriment to yourself than anyone else. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. That is sadly the unfortunate reality that I put myself in uh, more often than not. I am so self-sabotaging. 
a lot of I spoke to, uh, I spoke about this on one of my streams, but a lot of the times, like my mind will conjure up this worst case scenario um, that is so far fetched that it doesn't even have an ounce of reality in it. But because my mind is so good at conjuring these worst case scenarios about myself, I start believing them, and thereby I make them true. Um, so I self sabotage where there was no need for it. For example, let's say I have this fear of like, oh, I'm gonna uh, ruin it for someone else. Then I'm gonna tell that person like, oh, I'm sorry if I ruin it for you. Thereby ruining it for that other person by being this insecure and, and self detrimental. So absolutely, I am my own worst enemy. But hey, at least you'll have a job petting dogs to distract you from your crippling self doubt. God, this got real all of a sudden. <laughs> Ha 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 ha. Let's do some more hypotheticals. I, I don't know why it pops up down here all of a sudden and then it goes away. I thoroughly enjoy spending quality time with furry companions rather than socializing with hum humans. I mean, if we're talking in real life, it would be a strongly agree. I'm way better with animals than with humans. But if we're talking overall, I actually do kind of like socializing with people online. Uh, but it somewhat agree. Let's stick to petting dogs the way we know works instead of experimenting with different techniques. No, 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 completely. Uh, um, I think it's good to take hold of what works. There's a reason why it it is most likely been around for so long it's because it works and it's established that it works and it's good but don't let that stand in the way of you trying something else that goes for youtube too you might find a formula for your videos that that works that seems to garner attention and uh, bring in people that's good but don't don't like then only stick to that and that only don't be afraid to experiment and try something else. It might not work. You might say like, oh, that, that was a bad thing, but at least you tried it. I will rather, I would rather try something and fail than just like stay in my comfort zone all the time. So somewhat disagree. In which conspiracy theory do you believe the most, if any? Ah. <laughs> I had a talk with Taco Rehn and Menes not long ago about conspiracies. So Finland doesn't, hang on, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't exist. No, 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 that's not, I, I, I think it's out there somewhere. I don't know, but I have a suspicion that, that somewhere out there, there is a Finland. Um, but that was the conspiracy theory that we talked about. Um... I actually had a friend of mine say that Belgium doesn't exist. It's just the backyard of um, uh, France. If I were to believe a conspiracy theory, it would be that the government has ulterior motives. I do think to some degree that some governments, if not most of them, um, are doing things behind closed doors that is not necessarily beneficial to the people, but beneficial to their own rule. I think that if any conspiracy theory, that would be the one that I believe in the most. I'm not necessarily saying that they put microchips in your COVID vaccines, but I think that there are governments who will do things that, you know, makes people more fall in line to what they want and then post it as being something else. Oh, I see you're one of those government is out to get us type. I did not necessarily. I don't think, I don't think they're out to get us necessarily. I just, I, I am just, I don't think they are always forthcoming and honest with what's going on. Well, I hate to break it to you, but the government has better things to do than to plot against dog petters. That's true. That <laughs> That's one of the things I, I said about, like, um, the thing with, oh, uh, Bill Gates put 
microchips in you to spy on you. It's like, why the fuck would Bill Gates care that I'm out buying milk? Why would he, what would he use that information for? Trust me, they have bigger fish to fry. Ha ha ha. Let's see how you feel about the next statements. Oh god. I prefer to go with the f No, 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 no. <laughs> if there's something you won't see the fox doing, it is going with the flow. I am always trying to do things at least a little bit different than what is like the norm or the flow. And a strict petting schedule, you can go fuck yourself. Um, I don't like schedules and I don't like to just go with the flow. So I strongly disagree with this one. But then again, I do like to let the pups lead the way. So wait, wait, oh, hang on, semantics here. Uh, is he saying I prefer to go with the flow and let the pups lead the way so the pups get to dictate when I pet them? Because then I would agree. I would just be like, hey, pups, let me know whenever you want petting and I'm here. Rather than sticking to a strict petting schedule. I guess, I think I have to somewhat agree. I mean, these two are not mutually exclusive. That's why I'm a little perturbed by this question. Because I wouldn't go with the flow. But I also don't want to stay to a schedule. So I'm going to interpret it as... Go with the flow means go with whatever you're feeling in the moment. So, actually strongly agree. That, wow. That that shows you how important it, it is, uh, how you interpret something. I just went from strongly disagree and saying no, 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 to actually having to click strongly agree. And once again, it does this little pop down here. I don't get why that is. Come on, developers. I always make sure to give equal attention and love to every dog I pet rather than just focusing on efficiency and logic. Fuck efficiency and logic. What is your life motto? Uh, I had one where I said the one who tries to do most will uh, will achieve the least. Um, that's one I came up with. I, I don't know if anyone else have said, there's probably been someone who said something, uh, if not the exact same, then at least something very similar. Um, it's sort of like a jack of all trades, master of none. If you have too many plans in life, get ready to not, uh, fulfill any of those plans. Um, but what if, uh, be better today than you were yesterday? I think that's a solid one. Always try to do better today than you were yesterday. It doesn't need to be like a huge improvement. You don't need to like change the world from one day to another. But just look at something like, for example, a YouTube video and say, okay, this is the one I put out yesterday. How can I make today's video even better? Even if it's just like a 0.1% increase, always try, uh, always strive to be better. And never ever think of yourself as being uh, in a place where you have nothing left to learn. You have nothing to improve. You are now the greatest. You can't be better. Um, don't ever think that. Once again, let me tell you a story again from my daytime job. Um, I was working on a video shoot and I was filming together with one of the uh, big boys in Danish uh, television. Uh, film, uh, not film photograph, photograph, but um, uh, one of the big cameramen in Danish television. Um, he has been, if you've seen any show on Danish television containing like medical emergencies like ER or call 911 or whatever they're called, um, or anything police or uh, war zone re reports or something like that. You've probably seen his work. However, he said the day you feel you have nothing left to learn is the day you need to consider whether or not to quit your job because then you have gone from confident to arrogant. Uh, and I strongly adhere by those words. Um, you can always be better. There's always something you can improve. It may not be a huge improvement, but you can always do better. And I think we should always strive to be better. Not better than each other, but a better version of ourselves 
than the one we were yesterday. God, I went on a tangent just to answer this one, but be better today than you were yesterday. Oh, how inspiring. I'm sure that deep philosophical uh, statement really helps you in your pursuit of petting dogs for a living. Maybe you can embroider it on a pillow or get it tattooed on your forehead. That would be a funny stream. Vlog getting my tat forehead tattooed. <laughs> Shut up, comment section. I don't want to hear any encouragement on that one. I'm sure potential employers will be lining up to hire someone with such a profound, a profound life motto. Ha 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 ha. Tell me if you agree or disagree with the next statements. I absolutely thrive in a bustling pack of pups, but small and cozy cuddle sessions with a single dog are also pretty possum. I don't really strive. Well, see, now you put it in a weird one. Because if we were talking people and socializing, I don't do well in big crowds. I'm much better one-on-one -on -one or in a small group. That's my forte. Um, if I have to socialize in a big group, I, I am, I'm the one who backs off into a corner and sort of stays in the background. Um, but see here, but a small, small and cozy cuddle session with a single pups are also, also, so it's not either or, it is also, um, so I have to somewhat agree. I don't thrive in a bustling pack of humans. I would in a bustling pack of pups. But I think the core of this question, uh, I have to say somewhat agree. I'm constantly overflowing with innovative ways to pet dogs. I like to always think of new and better ways to do it. I wouldn't say I'm constantly overflowing with ideas, so somewhat agree. You've been given an elephant. What do you do with it? Um... Learn to communicate in elephantic. No, uh... Lead it safely through the porcelain shop. Not gonna lie, I'm kinda proud of that one. Oh sure, because every pet store owner dreams of their employees parading a massive elephant through the delicate China section. You, well, it isn't the saying like the elephant in the room, the elephant in the shop thing. I'm just trying to make it so that the elephant can be an elephant without causing destruction, you know? I'm sure the customers would l just love dodging shattered plates and... No, I said lead it safely through that shop. That means no shattered plates. Now you're twisting my words. I was so proud of that one. And then you make it into that. And elephant droppings while trying to pick out a new chew toy for Fido. <laughs> Good luck with that one. Ha ha ha. I've got a few more questions for you. I always have a designated schedule for petting dogs and backup plans in case of any unexpected interruptions. Are you kidding me? No. I am so impulsive and uh, carried by emotions. I I just go with whatever pops up. And then if that doesn't work, I'm like, oh crap, then what? Strongly disagree. Before giving a belly rub, let's consider the perks and drawbacks rather than act acting on a whim. Well... <laughs> See, this is what I should be doing, but I'm not always doing that. There are too many times where, um, not just with dog petting, as in this case, but there are too many times where I jump into something without necessarily thinking it through. I can be a bit impulsive and a bit naive at some points. Um, I've gotten better at it, uh, especially considering YouTube, but I do still sometimes jump into something without necessarily putting on the parachute first. Um, but before giving a belly rub, let's consider the perks and drawbacks rather than acting on a whim. This I do agree with. I think it is important to think things through. Um, also think through the bad things or the bad uh, potential of a certain situation saying, if I do this, can it be... Uh, what will I do if it doesn't turn out the way that I wanted it to? 
um, I think it's a good thing to think things uh, through in that regard. So, I am very much acting on a whim with a lot of things, but I think it is a good thing to consider the perks and drawbacks. So, strongly agree. I'm not always doing that, but I strongly agree with that's what it should uh, that's what should be done. The last time you hurt someone's feelings, how did that happen? That's an easy one. Uh, I already talked a little bit about that. I let my insecurities. Is that how you spell insecurities? I'm insecure about that. Ha, did you get it? Um rub off on someone else no no not rub off that sounds wrong uh affect someone else my insecurities should be my problems and my problems only it shouldn't be cause uh, disruptiveness to someone else just because i'm insecure about myself uh that's not fair so this is the last time uh uh, the last time I hurt someone's feelings, this is what happened. I let my insecurities affect someone else. Well, I hope you at least gave them a nice pat on the back to make up for it. I think I did. Or maybe just a treat. That's al that always seems to do the trick for my own insecurities. Ha 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 ha. I got a few more statements. I'd much rather spend my time petting dogs with a close companion than attending a crowded social gathering. Yes! Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I strongly agree. I rely on tangible evidence and hands-on experience, especially when it comes to petting dogs. S ah! I'm between somewhat agree and somewhat disagree. As I said, I think it is good to know why something works and ex acknowledge the fact that there is a reason for the for it working and we need to take that into consideration but i also want to go on a whim and try to do some things even though they haven't been tested and true um some ah somewhat agree what is your favorite movie from your childhood uh what is my favorite movie from my childhood uh I can't even remember what movies I watched during my childhood. I think... The, the only one that pops up right now that I remember s distinctly from my childhood was Free Willy. Oh, so you were more into touching aquatic creatures than playing with other kids. Not necessarily. Did you have a special connection with that whale? No. Do you, did you want to be a marine biologist or just a professional whale hogger? I'm sure that's a highly sought after job in today's market. Maybe you can add it to your resume under special skills. Ha ha ha. Statement time. I have a tendency, tendency to spontaneously shower dogs with love and affection. Yep. I am very spontaneous and I really like to give. Um, I, I don't know if I even have anyone close to me right now that I haven't gifted something to. I'm a giver. I'm a, I'm a giver. I never overthink it when it comes to petting dogs. I just follow my heart and give them all the love and attention they deserve. Holy Jesus, am I an overthinker. I overthink everything. I overthink me overthinking things. If you could be any historical figure, who would it be? Ah! Wait, what was his face? Hang on. Hang on, I'm I'm just searching this one to uh, make sure I get the name right. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I need to figure out what this person was called. Hang on. Uh, uh, hang on, I'm so sorry that this is taking some time, but 
Um, uh, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm gonna get there some somehow. There he is! God, that was so far away from me for so long. Confucius. Well, I hope you're ready to do some serious petting because Confucius said, choose a job you love and you'll never have to work a day in your life. This is true. Um, don't let something like pay dictate it. I know. I, I should be a little careful saying this. This is a little like... Um, uh, extreme. Uh, it's a little black and white. I know that most of us will at some point have to do a job or a chore or work that we don't necessarily love. We just have to get it done. We just have to do it. Even if we get a job we love. Like for example, if I'm a dog petter, I will have to scoop some poop. Am I right? So... I agree with this statement, but I'll also I acknowledge the fact that it isn't always that easy. Looks like you found your calling as a professional dog petter. Congratulations. Ha ha ha. I think we're half halfway there. The episode is 36 minutes long. Let's see what you think of the next statement. Okay, let's speed it up a bit here. I may talk to dogs more than humans, so don't be afraid to bark up a conversation with me. Um, somewhat agree. I absolutely adore pondering the wild and wacky theories of the canine mind. Oh, uh, strongly agree. What is your favorite holiday destination? Japan. Such a lovely country. Do you plan on petting some samurai dogs? Ah, Shibas. Can we get the terminology right here? And Shiba is not only is not only a breed of dog. Shiba Inu is um, is the dog breed. Um, but I believe that Shiba is or is it Inu? F fuck, I can't remember. It's either Shiba or Inu. I think it's Inu actually. That is the specific Japanese word for a dog. Hang on, looking it up. I don't want to sound stupid. I'm gonna go with it that it's Inu. Inu, Japanese. Yeah, many native. Shut up, phone. Uh, many native speakers say "ino" to mean dog in Japanese. Okay, okay. So I was somewhat right. I was a little off with the sheep. That's the dog breed, but "ino" means dog. Or maybe you're hoping to score a job as a ninja dog petter. Yeah, I'm gonna use my ninja skills to pet all the dogs. Good luck with that. Ha ha ha. I got a few more statements. My workspace is perfectly. Perfectly organized with no room for any unnecessary mess. Somewhat agree. I like to keep things organized, but you know you, 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 Sometimes you're gonna have a pizza box standing on your desk for a little bit. Shut up Let's put our feelings aside and focus on the rationality of petting dogs. Uh, somewhat agree Ah, Again, I land between somewhat agree and somewhat disagree. I think it's good to be rational um Again, things work for a reason, but I mean, emotions play a big part too, so disagree. Somewhat disagree. What's the last gift you gave someone and who did you give it to? I think that was a plot. No, it was actually a Steam game, I think, but I'm gonna say plushie to my girlfriend. Well, congratulations on your impressive gift-giving skills, Mr. Dog Petter. I'm sure your girlfriend was thrilled to receive a stuffed animal meant for a five-year-old. Five hey, hey, when you put it like that, shut up, shut up. I like plushies. I like plushies myself, and I like giving plushies. They're not just for five-year-olds. Shut up. Don't be like that. Oh, if you're over 18, you don't get to play video games. Shut up. Did you top off the romantic evening with a trip to the playground and, and some juice boxes? I fucking hate you. Shut up. Tell me if you identify with the next sentiments. I'd much rather spend my time petting dogs in a corner than trying to steal the spotlight. Strongly agree. I, I am so held back. I am so afraid of being intrusive that even when people tell me to like... Um, 
Yeah, this goes for YouTube and my daytime job uh, as well. We, even when people tell me specifically to advertise myself, I can't do it because I feel so intrusive. I am. I'm glad to stay in the shadows and in the corner. I can't do it. I much rather get my hands dirty petting actual dogs than just talking about the concept of petting them. Yeah. Um, I mean, I am a bit of a dreamer, so not all of the things I want to do can't be done right now. But instead of just sitting around a fucking table and talking about it and, uh, oh, let's schedule and uh, let's brainstorm, that's fine and all. But if that's all we do, let's let's get some work done. There, oh, okay, I'm going to go on a tangent again. It is so infuriating to me seeing people being like, yeah, we should save the world. Okay, and how are you doing that? Well, I'm sitting here on Facebook with my coffee. Yeah, you ain't doing shit to change the world. You're sitting there talking about wanting to save the world, yet you can't be bothered to put in an effort. It's the same thing with like villains in movies. It's like, yes, Mr. Bond, I, I am going to shoot you now. Yes, within any minute now, you will feel my my gun in your face. And it's like, stop talking about killing the main protagonist and actually do it if you want to be a villain. Now you just left it open for some backstabbing to happen. So the villain, uh, they always talk about how they're going to destroy the world. They never do it. Which they shouldn't, because they are a villain, but you know, you get my point. Yes, yes, please, let's somewhat agree. I think it's important to brainstorm and schedule and, and like, come up with ideas and, and, um, prepare. But, fuck, we need to really do more than we do. What used to be your favorite video game when you were young? Uh, here... Uh, he heroes of might, oh for fuck's sake, might and magic three. Freak me, I played a lot of that game. I misspelled it. I can't have that on my resume. Heroes of might and magic three. That was that was one of the first games I played. And I was really young. I think I was like eight when I started playing that. I can't remember eight or ten or something. And I played a lot of that. Oh, wow. No, no, no. Not wow. I, I don't play that. Heroes of Might and Magic 3? Really going for that nostalgia factor, huh? Yep. Oh. Heroes of Might and Magic 3, uh, Red Alert 2, games like that. God, it gives me nostalgia. Um, there's also the spin-off, Heroes of Might and Magic, uh, or Might and Magic 8, or whatever it's called. It's either 7, 6, 7, or 8. God, I played that game a lot, too. Every time I see that game, I get so nostalgic. Uh, I'm sure all those hours spent playing a fantasy strategy game will really impl impress potential employers. Maybe you can use your skills in managing a virtual army of pet... To pet all those imaginary dogs you'll be taking care of. They aren't imaginary. They are real. Shut up. Good luck with that. Ha ha ha. I am at my best when my dog petting schedule is organized and predictable rather than chaotic and unpredictable. No. I love chaotic and unpredictability. I don't want to know what I have to do tomorrow. If I know exactly every step of tomorrow, then tomorrow is going to be boring. Um, and I think... Speaking of jobs, I feel like some of the things that people say a lot when they are asked, what do you like about this job, is that they often say things like, oh, one day is never the same and you never know what tomorrow brings. I, so I, uh, I st uh, strongly disagree with this one. Predictability is a killer for me. I've been told I have a soft spot for furry friends and a knack for understanding their needs. I have been told that many a times. People are actually... Okay, I don't like to be self-aggrandizing, but this is going to come across a little bit like that. Um, I have often been told that people are surprised by how deep and emotional and, uh, 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 in lack of better terms, a good listener and good advice I give, given how, like, stupid and childish I act on my YouTube channel. So whenever I get one-on-one -on -one with people and really start talking, like deeply with them, uh, have a one-on-one -on -one heart to heart, people have more than often told me that they are surprised with 
like, I don't want to say how good I am, but how... Uh, how do I say this without sounding arrogant and self-aggrandizing? You know what I mean, so strongly agree. Shock the cashier of the grocery store with three items. What will you buy? If I have to shock them? There's this uh, famous meme or uh, um, funny video going around. Um, egg, plant, condom, and uh, Vaseline. If you haven't seen that video, go watch it. It's so funny. Um, because it implies something. Um, what would I buy? Um, I saw a video recently where a person was making a comedy stand-up show about something they bought at the, um, at the market, which apparently young people do, uh... Wait, 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 wait. I think I got it. Tampons. What was it? What was it? Uh... Alcohol. That's it. I don't want to get into why that's a bad thing or why um, that could be interpreted of you wanting to go to your home and do something that isn't necessarily uh, healthy. Um, so I'm not gonna write that because I don't want to inspire others unintentionally to go do that. Um, if I needed to shock, well, shock, no, shock, I don't want to say anything illegal. That's fucking horrible. If I need to shock the cashier, you know what's good? I'm, I'm fine going with the, the funny video. Eggplant, con, dumb. And va is it Vaseline or Vaseline? I think it's Vaseline. Let's see what the AI responds to this. <laughs> well, congratulations. You just won the award for most uncomfortable grocery store purchase. The cashier will probably think you're pla planning on having an intimate night with that eggplant and some unconventional lubrication. Yep. My man gets the joke. And let's not forget the condom, which can only, which I can only assume is for the protection in case the eggplant gets too risky. <laughs> God, where, what did I get myself into? See, this is what I said about not always thinking things through. Good luck with explaining that one to the cashier without turning beet red. Ha ha ha. I mean, who wouldn't want to spend their day surrounded by adorable fluffy pups instead of being stuck in solitude? Ah, I do enjoy my solitude, actually. And I think there is indeed such a thing as too much of something good. Um... Actually, I for me, it's a somewhat disagree. I think it is very important to have time with yourself. That's when you reflect on yourself. That's when you really better yourself. That's when you question yourself. And I think those things are healthy. So somewhat disagree. I may not have a magnifying glass, but I always see the big picture when it comes to petting dogs. Uh, somewhat disagree, actually. I'm not good at seeing the big picture or a grand perspective. I'm more of a small detail kind of guy. Hypothetical crime time. What is a crime you secretly dream of? Uh... Well, there's a reason why it's a crime. It's because it's not... Like, it hurts other people, right? What is a crime I dream of? Um... The only one I can sort of see myself doing, doing is uh, activism. You know, the activism where you like break into a lab and destroy stuff, stuff or like that. That's the only one I could feasibly see myself doing. I can also see myself driving somewhat over the speed limit, but that's not something I dream of. That's just, you know, whoops. Activism, I would say. It's not a crime to do activism, but some activism turn into a crime. And I think that I could see myself doing. Well, 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 Mr. Dogpetter, I see you're quite the activist at heart. 
But let me ask you, have you ever considered the consequences of your actions? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not gonna be one of those people... Oh god, I'm gonna get cancelled for saying this and the comment section is gonna be on fire, but... If you wanna change the world... Just sitting down on the road being an asshole... To everyday people... You aren't really doing that much of a difference. You are actually just pissing a lot of people off and by that... You are making it so that those people are being pushed away from your cause because they're gonna be like, oh, that's the cause that these people um, try to um, further. I'm not gonna associate with that. So you're not only, on, not only are you not really changing the world, you're just making it worse for your cause. Feel free to cancel me. I mean, sure, you may think it's all fun and games to liberate those poor innocent pups from their leashes. No, no, that would... I'm not a PETA guy. Just taking pets and releasing them into the world for their freedom, that's gonna hurt a lot of animals. A lot of animals right now are at a state where they are not capable of carrying themselves in the wild. If you just took your pet goldfish and put it in a pond, it would get eaten within seconds or it would not be able to feed itself and thereby dying slowly of hunger. So just taking pets and releasing them into the world thinking you're doing a good thing. Um, again, you aren't really. You're kind of hurting. Uh, I don't necessarily agree that we should just take wild animals and enslave them. No, no, no. But this that he's stating here isn't necessarily good either. So, liberate those poor innocent pups from their leashes? No, I don't agree with that. But have you thought about the chaos that would ensue? Can you imagine the chaos on the streets as dogs run wild, chasing after squirrels and mailmen? Yeah, that, that thing too. Have you been to a country where dogs are just left as soon as they are not interesting anymore? Have you been... Have you actually been to a country where that is a problem? Where dogs are left to themselves because the owners weren't, they couldn't be bothered anymore. Have you seen the suffering of those dogs? I have. I wouldn't want that for my dog. So, again, just letting them free out into the world thinking that you're helping them, I think is kind of ignorant. Uh, and don't even get me started on the potential lawsuit, uh, lawsuits uh, from angry owners. Not to mention the dog catching business would boom, leaving you with a criminal record and no job as a dog petter. So let's stick to legal forms of activism, shall we? Exactly. By all means, be an activist, but just don't, don't ruin the lives of people who are just trying to live their life. Trust me, it's for the best. Ha ha ha. I prefer to let the dog lead the way rather than meticulously mapping out every petting session. Uh, somewhat agree. What, again, I don't like to be withhold to a schedule. I don't like that. Um, I don't get to say like, oh, you already reached your petting quota today. So, somewhat agree. Let the dogs lead the way. I tend to use my logical brain over my emotional heart when it comes to choosing which furry friend to pet, pet next. Strongly disagree. I am so driven by emotions. Let's reverse roles. What do you want to ask me? Um... Ah, uh, frick. Ah... Uh, why are you doing this? Particular job. What is your motive? What is your intent here? Are you doing this for the money and you don't really care what job I end up getting as long as you get paid? Or are you doing this because you want to help people like me find a job that is fitting for them? Huh? Huh? Mr. Guy here? Well, after eight years of dealing with people's unrealistic job expectations and resumes filled with lies, I figured it was time to try and hand try my hand at being the one making unrealistic demands and telling blatant lies. Plus, I heard the dog petting, petting industry isn't booming and I'm all about getting in on the ground floor of a good trend. Can't wait to add professional dog petter to my LinkedIn profile. <laughs> ha ha ha. We're nearing the end. I would much rather spend my time petting dogs than engaging in endless small talk. Yeah. Uh, no, I... 
I think small talk is good. I'm just not very good at it. I don't mind small talk. Just again, it's all about balance. So somewhat agree. I have a keen eye for detail and can quickly spot any changes in a dog's behavior or surroundings. This I agree with. When and where would you go if you have one-time access to a time machine? Ah, uh, frick. Where would I go? I'll go back to the 90s because they seemed so happy, but that was, maybe it was just because I was growing up. Um... Is it too cliche and trivial to say back before I made mistakes so I can redo them and do better? I think it is. Um, 1990s uh, Kyoto. 1990s Kyoto. Sorry, but I don't think the dogs there would appreciate your vintage fashion sense. I actually quite like Japanese fashion. Plus, I highly doubt they have any dog parks equipped with a time machine. Next! Ha ha ha. Okay, so the AI didn't have an answer for that one. That was too specific. I've got two more statements. Yeah, but I don't have time in the episode. This was supposed to just be like a quick 20 minutes. I'm constantly motivated by the thought of petting dogs and I always follow through on it. No. Not necessarily. I am motivated uh, for dog petting as I am for YouTube, but there are some days that are better than others. And I think with everything you do, you will have days where you're like, oh, I can't be bothered today. I'm not feeling it. And that's okay. That is one of the things I actually want to get rid of is this, you must always be positive uh, minded and always be at your peak and always be a hundred percent. No, there are going to be days where you're not feeling it. And we need to acknowledge the fact that this is okay and that this is normal. I want to get rid of it because people, um, it has gotten more normalized as of late, uh, thanks to some big YouTubers taking breaks to uh, focus on their mental health. But it wasn't long ago where that was, um, <clears throat> that was frowned upon, where it was more important to be, you must always be uploading. You must always put your best into everything. Where now people are more like, hey, I'm not feeling it, so I'm not going to upload today, and that's okay. So, um, somewhat disagree. Uh, no, I mean, I am, I'm not, no, constantly, no. I have a keen sense for the vibes in a room, especially when it comes to the emotional well-being of our furry friends. Somewhat agree, but as I said earlier, sometimes I let my insecurities bleed out and then I overthink things and I self-sabotage and I I get this worst case scenario thing. So I think I'm good at reading a room, but sometimes I, I read too much into a room. I read more into a room than was actually there. So I can only say somewhat agree. I wanted to say strongly agree, but that would be a lie. Okay, thanks for answering all my questions and for enduring some, my sometimes somewhat sarcastic remarks. I come to know a lot about you. Your personality type is what I'd call a kooky caniner. Let me explain why. Kooky caniners are like human puppies, full of love and enthusiasm for ideas, but with a contemplative side that wanders Jesus Christ music that wonders if fire hydrants have feelings too. Yeah, that sounds like me. Imagine a magical forest uh, creature in human form that's a cookie caniner um, frolicking on in fields of imagination and occasionally tripping over reality. Yeah, I am more of a dreamer than a realist and sometimes uh, reality gives me a small check. They got so much empathy, you'd think they were born with an emotional first aid kit in hand, ready to bandage up your sorrows. Yes, but here comes the issue with that. Sometimes that empathy that I think I have actually is stronger than the negative emotions that someone else is going through, meaning that I feel worse than the person 
going through something, thereby making it worse not only for me but also for that person by over, uh, over uh, flowing the empathy for them. I I suck up people's emotions a little too well. I need to stand a little more on my own in that regard. It sounds egotistical, but I hope you get what I mean. Kooky caniners often seem like they're wandering through life with a deep thought, a bubble floating above their head. Their inner world is so vast and complex, calling it daydreaming is like calling the ocean a puddle. Yeah, I see myself in that a lot. Kooky caniners are like walking, talking incarnations of the aha moment, often struck by revelation at the most inconvenient times like during a fire drill. They might look like they're off in space, but they're actually me mentally drafting their next poem or their blueprint for world peace. Wouldn't necessarily put it that self-aggrandizing, but... Ro romancing a kooky caniner is like being in an indie film. Unconventional, full of quirky twists and likely to have a soundtrack featuring the shins. That sounds true. They're always ready for a deep dive into philosophy, unless it's before their morning coffee, then it's deep dives into silence. Yes, sir. Don't speak to me uh, in the morning unless it's about uh, pizza, bacon, sex, or more coffee or more sleep. Offer a cookie canine or some constructive criticism and watch them fold into a paper swan of self-improvement. Yes and no. Um, I will absolutely take it to heart. I won't brush it off. I know that constructive criticism is given, first of all, as I help, but also because it's it's true. It's not just someone being like, uh, your audio sucks, and it's just because they need to have some negativity. I don't think that. But also, I think I am very much susceptible to um, taking constructive criticism a little too personal. I think I oftentimes see what is merely constructive and helpful criticism as an attack on my being. Um, which is not healthy and it's it's wrong. I acknowledge that. But I gotta be honest with myself and say like that's how I react sometimes to constructive criticism. Depending on how it's portrayed and laid out to me. Ask them about their life goals and prepare for an enthusiastic vision board presentation complete with confetti cannons. If Kermit the Frog went to an art school, got a Pinterest account and read a lot of Rumi, that's basically a kooky caniner. They love personal freedom like cats love cardboard boxes. Oh yes. Inexplicably and with their whole eccentric heart. Yes, I need to have that personal freedom. Encountering a kooky caniner is like finding a hidden cafe filled with books, cozy, inviting, and a perfect escape from the noise of the world. Interesting words of choice, because that is a little bit how I want my channel to come across. I want my channel, that's my goal with the channel, is to make it into a brief respite from all the negativity and hatred and noise, stress, depression, all of that. Um, uh, the noise in the world, the the thinking of the world. I want my channel to be a place of respite where you can come in and turn off your brain and you don't have to worry about anything. You can just relax and just turn off your brain for 30 to 60 minutes. That's what I want to offer with the channel, a respite. Cookie caniners approach their jobs like a canvas for their values. Each project a stroke of passion and a da dash of idealism. Yeah, that sounds like me. Stick them in a cubicle and they'll transform it into a co cocoon of inspiration with fairy lights and probably an uh, actual tiny garden. Oh, I love tiny gardens. Meeting Meetings with kooky caniners often turn into storytelling sessions. They're not off topic, they're just adding narrative, depth, and emotional subtext. Oh, Jesus Christ, yes. I can't say anything in short. It always comes out in like these eight paragraphs. Their work ethics is like a secret weapon that activates as soon as they're aligned with their passion. And then, watch out, world. Task a kooky canine with something they care about and they'll handle it with the care of a librarian handling the first edition uh, Tolkien. Yeah, yeah. Their emails are so well crafted. 
uh, I think I could be a little more to the point when I write something to someone else. It's like receiving a personal letter, warm, considerate, and possibly including a haiku for good measure. Yeah, yeah. The desk of a kooky caniner is where post-its go to find a higher purpose, transforming from mere reminders to motivational affirmation. Interesting again, I actually did that on my uh, du um, during my latest employment. I actually wrote notes, um, just a single phrase of like motivation or just kind words and posted it on my uh, co-worker's desk. And, and it, become a, it became a trend in, in that workplace it, that we would write small inspirational messages to each other. Not something grand, something world changing. Just that little phrase of like, hey, um, uh, good on you. Something like that. That's actually something that I have taken with me. And that's what we're trying to do with Feel Good Friday. We're not trying to change the world on Feel Good Friday, but if we can leave the world just a little bit more positive by going to someone and saying something nice, thumbs up. Deadlines are more like gentle suggestions than sometimes get that sometimes get swept away in the flurry of their creative creative tempest. Jesus Christ, yes. Oh my God, Proc procrastination is my middle name. I always do things in the, the nick of time I always if i have a deadline you can make sure that i'll do the thing the day before the deadline they thrive in work environments that resemble a cozy coffee shop discussion full of ideas caffeine and casual existential breakthroughs yeah networking for cookie caniners is like accidentally going to a party they don't love it but they'll make a friend in the quiet corner discussing the universe yes this this, this me, this me exactly. I am not good at networking, but if it happens, I'll make one friend and we will be in a corner in our own little bubble. Then rather than me standing on the table in the middle of a, of a uh, gathering. Their creativity isn't just outside the box. It's, it's transcended the concept of boxes and now exist in a realm of infinite possibility. I mean, I wouldn't self-aggrandize myself to that extent, but I will say that it is a bit outside the box. I'm not special in any way. There are plenty of other people doing almost exactly the same thing that I'm doing and have been doing it for way longer than I have. But I wouldn't say that I'm necessarily part of the norm. During brainstorming sessions, kooky caniners blossom like flowers in a fa in fast forward, and every idea is the seed of something beautiful. If I have the courage to speak up, that is, I don't always have that due to me being such an insecure being. When the going gets tough, the kooky caniner gets philosophical, turning uh, obstacles into life lessons, complete with a narrated inner monologue. Y yeah. I'm also halted a lot by obstacles that I shouldn't be, and I have a tendency to turn a, a stone into a mountain. Feedback for them is like a delicate dance. It needs rhythm, respect, and maybe a little bit of moonlight to soften the edges. This is exactly what I was talking about with constructive criticism and brutal honesty. If you are too brutal in your way of speaking, it may be honest, yes. It may be constructive criticism, yes. But if it's too brutal, you're not gonna, you're just gonna hurt, hurt me instead of get me to listen. Absolutely, this, this, I think this is the most accurate thing that has been said all day. Feedback for them is like a delicate dance. It needs rhythm, respect, and maybe a little bit of moonlight to soften the edges. I'm not saying that you should blow smoke up my ass and just be like, oh, you're so blah, blah, blah. You can be honest with me. But if you come across as like assertive or demeaning or too brutal, then I'm just going to be left hurt and I'm not going to take in what you're trying to say to me. Kooky caniners treat romantic relationships like they're crafting a poem. Every word is deliberate, full of meaning, and prob 
probably revised 16 times. Oh yes, just ask my girlfriend. Friendship with a cookie caniner is like owning a rare vinyl record. It's a unique experience that gets better every time you play it. I hope. I mean, I don't... To be honest, I don't make a lot of friends because I'm too insecure. Uh, and I'm too scared to let people close to me. And I... I often times don't feel that connection with people because I feel so secluded, like an outlier, like a, an oddball. I always see a crowd and then me standing next to it. Sure, I may sometimes take part in the conversation, but I st always see myself as sort of the the odd one out. I'm not... I'm physically in the group, but I'm not really part of the group, if that makes sense. So, it is rare that I get that connection with someone where I would call them... Where I would think they would call me friends. Um, but I hope that the people that see me as a friend, see it as a unique experience that gets better every time you play it. At least that's what I strive to do. I will fail at some point and, and, and more times than one. Sure, we all fail. We all make mistakes. But as I said, I, I strive to do better today than I did yesterday. I still have much to learn, but I try to be the best me that I can be. I'm not always successful, but I do try. They fall in love like they're slipping into a warm bath, slowly, then all at once, surrounded by scented candles and existential thoughts. Yeah. Their idea of flirting could include a mix, mix of shy glances and discussing the symbolism in a Studio Ghibli film. Yep, this is me. Uh, in that regard, I'm so all all or nothing well that's not the right term but i am i am at one point shy and at the other point i'm almost overconfident and over comfortable it doesn't make sense i don't make sense as a person dating a kooky canine feels like being in a mystery novel where each chapter reveals new intricate parts of their character they form connections like a spider weaves a web carefully artfully and with surprising strength this i would agree on um i am very withheld i am very secluded i am very retracted i am very introverted i'm very reserved so so when i form a connection if i form a connection with you you are fucking special and i do my utmost to treat that like the magic that it is the connection that it is. For a kooky caniner, a perfect date might involve lying on a blanket under the stars, sharing dreams and fears until the sunrise interrupts. Yep. Except expect soul-bearing conversations because kooky caniners don't do shallow. They'll plunge you into depths like an emotional scuba diver. Yabba. Romancing them is like being inside a quirky indie movie where the characters are weirdly profound and the dialogues are incredibly memorable. Ah, well, I hope. They remember emotional landmarks. Yes, this goes for good uh, and bad. Um, If you really impact me emotional, it will stay with me for a long time, if not forever. And that, as I said, both the good emotions but also the bad emotions. That offhand comment you made three years ago, they got it stored in their heart's archive section significant. Yep. Again, ask my girlfriend. She'll be like, how the fuck do you remember that I said this? If a kooky canine disagrees with you, it's probably presented in a way that feels like a warm hug followed by a soft, but actually. Yeah, um, we were talking about the sugar coating and that I want things to be honest. I I'm not good at that. As I said with uh, with the when I get some graphics where I just accept it instead of being honest and saying that it needs improvement. But if I <clears throat> hang on, I need to take a sip here. My throat is drying out. One hour and fourteen minutes I've been recording. Jesus Christ, I didn't expect this to be this long. Okay. So 
because I am so insecure and I'm so scared of hurting someone else, I will often rap. If I try to say something like constructive criticism to you, I am so scared of it coming across as me being rude or me trying to say that I know better than you or that you are a bad and need to improve for something that I will not necessarily sugarcoat it, but I will wrap it in... I don't want to say kindness because that sounds self-aggrandizing, but I will wrap it in positivity in a way where I hope that it isn't taken in a bad way. I, that doesn't make sense. Again, it makes sense in my head, but you know. They're the friends who send you handwritten letters, not emails, complete with doodles along the margins and circles around the eyes. I've done that, actually. Yeah. In relationships, kooky caniners give their whole hearts, which is grand and wonderful, unless they are run out of batteries and need some alone time to recharge. As I said, I I really need my, um, my loner time. My time with myself, um, my social batteries especially, uh, but also like mental batteries, they drain excessively fast. Like they drain very fast. I very easily get emotionally and socially drained and I need a lot of alone time to recharge. Um, this is especially true of me, yeah. Um, and the problem with it too is that given the uh, diagnosis, diagnosis that I have, it takes those batteries, the emotional and social batteries, a lot longer to recharge. And it amazes me that some people use social um, uh, activities as a way to recharge other batteries because I'm like, well, how do you do that? Because I, I feel so drained after doing something social. But then again, like, I get where it's coming from because I'm starting, with, especially with YouTube and the people I have met, the absolute wonderful people that I've gotten to know through YouTube, I'm starting to get getting a little more uh, sense of that. Now I'm starting to see what it is that people mean when they say that social situations actually recharge their batteries. Not long ago, like anything social, online or in real life would drain me completely and I wouldn't feel necessarily any good like recharging of other good batteries but I'm starting to now especially with the wonderful people that I'm meeting here on YouTube or through YouTube then hanging out with them and spending time with them or just talking to them it can be draining yes but at the same time, it's so giving and it's so recharging. So I think I have learned what people mean when they say that social situations recharge their batteries because that was not the case for me until not long ago. So thank you to you guys. I owe you a lot. Being close to a kooky canine means embracing a life of heartfelt talks, unexpected laughter and sh shared moments of both whimsy and depth. Yep, as I said, um, I do have this kind of foxed side of me and it is me. I'm not putting up a character. This is part of me. This slightly immature, goofy, silly, carefree uh, way of being, that is me. But I do also have a very deep side. Um, it isn't often I show it, but it is there and that is also me. They aren't mutually exclusive. Cookie caniners have enough empathy to fill an Olympic sized swimming pool. As I said, sometimes too much and that's not good. And then some. They practically invented the deep end. Creativity cookie caniners have stashes of it like a squirrel with nuts except instead of winter they're preparing for a brainstorm. They're the maestros of emotional nuance. If feelings had colors, Kooky Caniners would be the va Van Gogh of mood palettes. Yes. If you got an inner child, Kooky Caniners have inner playgrounds. Uh, bountiful, imaginative, and always open for a thoughtful swing or slide. Yep. Principled and passionate, Kooky Caniners could lead a march of, for peace and love with beautiful protest signs, of course. 
Their communication skills are so honed, they could persuade a brick wall to open up about its feelings. I strive to, but I'm not always good. Um, I like to be able to reach a person on that person's own terms, but I do sometimes still let my insecurities dictate how I communicate, and that can sometimes turn bad. But when it comes to decisiveness, Cookie caniners can be as wavering as a leaf in an autumn breeze all over the place and falling for anything. Yeah, I'm not good at, at saying to myself like, okay, now sit down and focus on this one thing. Get that done. Get it done in good time. Uh, and then you can go off and do blah, blah, blah. No, I, I'm so emotionally and impulsively driven. So I'm not really very good at being decisive. Confrontation for them is like garlic to vampires. They'd rather write a novel about conflict resolution techniques. Yeah, again, I take confrontations way too personal and way too close to heart. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Their attention to detail is well selective. The big picture is painted in HD, but the fine print might as well be in Swahili. Kooky caniners get lost in their thought like tourists in a foreign city, wide-eyed wanderlust driven and occasionally forgetting where they left their map. Yeah. If procrastination were an Olympic sport, some kooky caniners would be torn between going for gold and I'll start training tomorrow. Yes. God, I'm good at procra procrastinating. I used to be a procrastinator and then I became pro at it. Being an idealist is great until reality hits. And when it does, Cookie Caniners can exhibit the unparalleled drama of a telenovel. Yeah. Time management for Cookie Caniners often involves uh, squeezing a five minute task into an hour and an hour's task into the mythical ladder. Yeah, that's true. Also, this just dawned on me. Did it use the word Cookie Caniners because I chose Dog Petter? Or would everyone who gets these answers and this personality type be described as a kooky caniner. And perfectionism, kooky caniners spin it into a fine art, each task a masterpiece that just one adjustment away from being complete forever. Yeah, I never finish a project. Did I get the job at least? Well, 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 Looks, look who we have here. Well, it's still me. A self-proclaimed -pro -pro dog lover, huh? Yeah, certainly not a proficient speaker, that is. God, I'm stumbling over my words. Let me guess, you probably have a print Pinterest board dedicated to cute puppy pictures and you cry every time you see a dog in a movie. Shut up. We don't need to let the viewers know that. Am I right? Shut up. No need to... Mm -hmm. But don't worry, my dear applicant, I'm not here to judge. In fact, I think I have the perfect job for you. You see, we have this position available for a dog petter, and I have a feeling you would be a perfect fit. Why, you ask? Well, let me break it down for you. You are cookie canine, my friend. You have a wild imagination and a heart full of compassion. No, no, come on, we're playing hire me. Don't get emotional. <laughs> Fuck, I thought this was gonna be like a 20 minute quickly, like, haha, here's funny job situations. You see the world through rose colored glasses and you're not afraid to let your freak flag fly. <laughs> well, I'm posing as a fox on YouTube. I guess uh, that ship has long sailed with me on it. Yep, let that freak flag fly. If you're a freak, be a freak, be yourself. And let's be real, what, what better job for a kooky caniner than petting dogs all day? You'll be surrounded by furry friends who will appreciate your quirky personality and your endless supply of love and affection. Plus, let's not forget about your intuitive nature. You have an act for understanding the needs and emotions of others, which will come in handy when dealing with our four-legged clients. And your ability to... Uh, adapt and go with the flow will make you an a valuable member of our team <clears throat> so my dear kooky caniner what do you say 
Are you ready to unleash your full potential and become the ultimate dog petter? I think it's a match made in heaven. So a great fit. That's impressive. That means you're hired, obviously. Congratulations are in order. Take a moment to celebrate. Your new journey is just beginning. Good luck on your new path. <laughs> oh, by the way, if you want to be in our next game, pay attention. We are working on a detective game with 100% freeform inter interrogations. That sounds amazing. I would love to play that. We will include you and your personality in our next game. If you leave a review with your name and the words Cookie Caniner disclaimer, you may find yourself cast as a witness, a serial killer, or anything in between. Absolutely, I will. Ha ha ha. Thank you for playing. Time to roll the credits. Both of them. Congrats, you got the job, hired you, achievement unlocked, and the healer believes in unicorns and something. I didn't get to read that achievement. Wow. Okay, um, I thought this was just gonna be like, as I said, like a 15 to 20 minutes. Um, here's a job interviewer that goes sort of over the line and it, it gets wacky. All of a sudden it turned into this heartfelt, uh, deep, honest, one-on-one uh, -on -one talk. And I'm not talking about between me and the job interviewer. I'm talking about between you as the viewer and me. It's not often I let myself out onto my YouTube channel, at least not this side of me, um, this private side of me. I do like to keep um, personal stuff and uh, YouTube stuff completely separated, but sometimes it happens that we get to know each other a little better. This took a turn and I'm actually glad it did. I am very happy with how this uh, episode turned out and I hope you enjoyed it too. I highly suggest or and recommend that you play this game for yourself it's called hire me um it's a little like the test games um but this was actually a fun spin on that whole concept i highly recommend this game um and i hope we you got to know me a little bit better at least i want to thank you for taking part in this and being here with me um and thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it as much as I did and I hope to see you in the next one. All right, I am out.